Hello pilots and welcome to another video. This time I want to show you how I tune my INA 3.0 planes and this is not just a casual tuning video how auto tune and auto level and all that stuff works but in general how I for me personally tune my planes properly now. So after the changes of INA 3.0 I made some changes to my own tuning process and that's what I want to show you now. First of all, I launched the AR Pro in this case with uh, auto launch. I knew I, uh, I took over my settings from INAV 2.6, my auto launch settings. And here I'm flying the AR Pro with the 4S3P 10,500 milliamp hour lithium ion pack. I think it's important to uh, tune the plane on the heaviest configuration you are planning to fly it, especially if you use multiple uh, battery sizes for the same plane, just to have the lowest limit or the lowest reaction times of the plane because of inertia. And uh, by this you get a very stable tune for any lighter setups too. Shortly after the auto launch here, I tested the return to home function with the default pit tunes and the default rates. And uh, you see here the new INA 3.0 feature with the um, climb first spiral mode. That means that the plane does a spiral flight while it climbs to the return to home altitude and then it's coming back home. I added the uh, OSD of course here because the main video feed is stabilized. And here during the turn uh, into the home arrival spiral, um, I saw some horizon drift. So that's the reason why the altitude starts to fluctuate a little bit here. Um, I'm still working with one of the developers to optimize that further and reduce the horizon drift even more. But uh, for now it is at least able to maintain a stable flight even on default settings. So just in case something goes wrong on the Maiden, most planes should be fine to come back home. The next step for me was then to tune the board uh, level trim. That means uh, the auto with the auto level feature. So uh, in angle mode, the plane will more or less uh, maintain altitude without an active altitude control. This is important to have a stable altitude control then later in autonomous modes and it makes life for the flight controller much easier. And for the new continuous auto trim, the uh, board alignment flight gives the flight controller enough op opportunity to trim the servos correctly in center, so the neutral positions can be saved. Now let's repeat that part and watch at the alt um, on the variometer, on the altitude speed, on the vertical speed uh, indicator in the OSD. And uh, after that short turn and a, a few seconds of level flight, you see that even now in angle mode, uh, the variometer will pretty much stay around zero meters per second. So it automatically adjusts now for level flight. And uh, this helps later navigation modes to maintain altitude much better. Usually after doing the uh, auto level, I would now land the plane and trim it mechanically. So the control force surfaces are centered uh, or stay at their current position with the servo midpoints set to 1500. But uh, the AR Pro in this case was already mechanically trimmed on INAV 2.6. So I kept it that way and directly moved to the auto tune process. And as you can see here, I enabled the um, OSD, the tuning OSD, where I can see my PID values or PID FF values. And uh, I can watch them change. And right now I ended up with around 50 on the row axis on full stick input. Now it rises still a little bit, uh, depends a little bit on the airspeed. And for the pitch axis, I usually don't always only make up and down pitch or even loops. It's also very helpful to do it like this uh, with a steep bank angle, a very sharp turn and just do one or two rounds uh, as this includes a lot of pitch input or full pitch input that also can be used to determine the correct rates and the correct feed forward values. And you see at the end it uh, ended at about 173, 175 uh, feet forward. 
and that was pretty fine to fly stable. After the autotune is completed, I kept the plane in acro mode and turned off the autotune mode and I just released the sticks and uh, yeah, it was flying completely dead straight without any stick input. And then I tested return to home again and as you can see, it makes a very smooth and uh, direct turn and comes back home. I was already above the return to home altitude so it didn't make a full spiral. And now it moves in into the home circle again. You will still see some horizon drift even after the tuning, but as I said, uh, I'm still working on optimizing that and find better settings. Especially on the AR wing, I have a little bit more issues here, maybe because of the slow rates or the slow um, banks it does when it goes into the turns uh, due to the limited bank angle I have set up here. Uh, so in the first seconds when it enters the turn, the um, accelerometer attenuation is still not kicking in, so it starts to drift due to the g-forces, slight g-forces. Uh, but I will try to optimize that further. With smaller planes I don't have that issue and the horizon is much more stable on that one. What you can do in the first place, if you still have that much uh, horizon drift, you can go to the CLI and uh, reduce the accelerometer IMU ignore rate a little bit more. By default on INAF 3.0 it's on 8, I think, if I remember correctly, or 7, and uh, just reduces by 1, 2, or maybe 3 points, but do not go lower than 5, definitely not and uh, see if that optimizes it. The downside is if you fly in very windy conditions it could mean that the horizon will never get readjusted so over time it will drift more and more so you have to try to find what the best value is for the plane and the uh, navigation settings you have set. Just play around with the IMU accelerometer ignore rate a little bit to find a good value. But as you can see here I uh, uh, switched into cruise mode and the navigation itself is very stable already. What I tuned next is uh, the pitch to throttle ratio. So when I fly in cruise mode and I pull the pitch stick back then the plane starts to climb. I have set a climb rate of I think 5 meters per second in the navigation settings and I change the pitch to throttle ratio now to raise or lower the factor of throttle gain depending on the pitch angle so my ground speed in this case always stays the same. So I look what is my ground speed at level flight it's about 77 78 kilometers per hour and now if I fully pitch back the nose goes up I see the ground speed drops a little bit so I raise the pitch to throttle ratio until the ground speed goes up. If you have an airspeed sensor you can of course also use the uh, airspeed as a reference that make, makes even more sense than ground speed as it is not influenced by wind. But for me here I found the perfect value at a pitch to throttle ratio of 17 and I can be certain that in auto modes the plane will never stall and always keep a correct flying speed. Now I've, after I have uh, gained a little bit of altitude, the next thing I usually tune is the zero throttle, th uh, zero throttle down pitch. What that means is if I cut the throttle completely, um, right now the motor stop over override was disabled so I switched into angle mode. Now I cut the throttle completely and then I watch the ground speed again or airspeed if available and then I raise the zero, thr zero throttle pitch uh, number higher and higher until the plane goes nose down and maintains a constant glide speed. This is very helpful if you want to or if you have to do an emergency glide for example if you, your battery runs out or if your motor dies or whatever. So as soon as I cut the throttle now the plane will automatically pitch down a little bit. I ended up with a, a 8 degree value here. It automatically pitches down and uh, makes sure that the airspeed is maintained and it never stalls in angle mode. The next thing I did was fine-tune the 
pitch axis a little bit because um, the AR Pro is not the most agile plane and has relatively low pitch rates. I think I ended up with 70 or 80 degrees per second if I remember correctly. I could ra raise them a little bit if I want to. I have some room, but the main uh, problem or I wouldn't call it a problem. The main thing that annoys me a little bit is that the pitch tune is always very stiff because of the high uh, P and I gains that are tuned based on the feed forward. So uh, on the AR Pro at least I reduce them by around 50% uh, to get them lower and have a smoother f uh, flying feel. And as you can see, it's still very locked in on the pitch axis, but it flies much smoother and makes more fun for me to fly. So you can adjust the P and uh, I values to your liking if you want to, if you are not happy with the auto tune. This is also, so that's it. That's my uh, basic tuning process that I do on most on my planes in uh, this order. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, then please also hit the corresponding like button. If you want to see more of that, just subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will try to continue to make content in German and in English as good as I can. And we will see you or I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.